Welcome my dear students and other viewers who may have stumbled across this video to my chapter 11's continuing coverage of liquids and intermolecular forces. In this video we're going to begin with chemical equilibrium. So evaporation, which is technically called vaporization, which is of course the conversion of a liquid into a gas, occurs when the molecules at the surface of the liquid gain enough energy to overcome their intermolecular attractions to the other molecules in the liquid. They then get expelled and escape the gas molecules like this. In other words, in this figure, which is taken from a separate text that I dearly love written by Mark Bishop, also referenced in the description below. It shows how the surface of a liquid, particles of your liquid eventually get kicked out by their neighbors. That kick propels the particle out of the liquid, at which time it's traveling too fast to experience any intermolecular attractions to the rest of the molecules from whence it came. Thus, this molecule has now been converted from a liquid to a gas. And that's how vaporization occurs at a molecular or atomic level. Now, when a liquid evaporates in a closed container, the thing that I just showed you can't really happen permanently. Instead, the molecules at the liquid surface spontaneously convert to gas molecules and fill up the space in the container above the liquid. But because the container is closed, it has a lid, the headspace between the liquid and the lid will eventually become saturated with as many gas molecules as it can hold. Now, once that occurs, the gas molecules colliding with each other and with the liquid surface, some of those gas molecules will rejoin the liquid and become liquid particles once more. In a closed container then, the system eventually reaches a point where for every molecule that converts from liquid to gas, there is another molecule that converts back from gas to liquid. This kind of state is called dynamic equilibrium and is showcased beautifully in this YouTube video that I'll link in the description below as well as possibly floating as a video card over my head right now. What then is boiling? Well, when liquids evaporate in an open container or no container at all, then gas molecules escape pretty much permanently never to be reclaimed again by their liquid brethren. This evaporation or vaporization or boiling continues until the liquid is completely converted to gas. Definitionally then, all liquids experience some downward pressure upon them. We call this atmospheric pressure, which is essentially the weight of all of the molecules that are pushing down on that liquid. The liquid itself, however, will exert a pressure back up against that atmosphere, which is called that liquid's vapor pressure. Thus, evaporation, also called vaporization or boiling, occurs when the pressure exerted by the liquid molecules against atmosphere equals or exceeds the pressure exerted by the atmosphere down on the liquid. Once that happens, these molecules start escaping, convert from liquid to gas, and hence boil. Definitionally then, boiling happens when the vapor pressure equal or exceeds atmosphere. As showcased beautifully in this YouTube video from someone else, again, I'll place a link in the description below as well as possibly floating over my head. As I just explained, Vapor pressure is, of course, the pressure exerted by the liquid against the atmospheric pressure above it. Generally, then, you can see that as intermolecular forces go up, molecules stick to each other more intensely and make it harder to boil. That makes it so that their vapor pressure actually goes down and their boiling point goes up. In other words, if you have strong intermolecular forces, those molecules stick intensely to each other, which means you have to crank more heat into them to get them to wiggle apart and separate and convert from a liquid to a gas, that is, to boil. So stronger intermolecular forces mean higher boiling point. And that actually means that that substance will vaporize less. In other words, it has a lower vapor pressure. And of course, all of these arrows can be flipped. In other words, as intermolecular force strength decreases, vapor pressure increases and boiling point also goes down. Now, the way I like to think about this is I imagine a vapor pressure being like the substance's volcano, pushing up against atmosphere. If you have a very intense vapor pressure, that molecule is gonna easily push against atmosphere and easily boil. So if I've got a very high vapor pressure, that molecule is gonna boil very easily. It won't require very much energy to get that molecule to boil. Hence, it has a very low boiling point. Does that make sense okay? Now, liquids that boil very easily are said to be volatile. So lower boiling point means more volatile, more easily boilable. On that note, this figure right here, taken from our text, referenced in the description below, shows us that liquids have different boiling temperatures at different pressures. You see, on the y-axis, we have vapor pressure, and on the x-axis, we have temperature. As an example exercise, use this figure to estimate the boiling point of diethyl ether under an external pressure of 610 torr. How would we solve this? Well, all we do is find where 610 torr appears on the y-axis, which is around here, and then we trace over here to intersect diethyl ether boiling. 
Then we go down to the x-axis and estimate that the temperature of intersection is somewhere around maybe 25? Thus, at a lower vapor pressure of 610 torr, diethyl ether would start to convert to a gas that is vaporized at around 25 or so degrees C. Now, I might be wrong on that. It looks maybe it's around 27, 28. I don't know. It's somewhere in that ballpark, okay? Here's another one for you. Using this figure, I would like you to estimate the boiling point of ethanol, this orange line right here, at an external pressure of 200 torr, and estimate the external pressure at which ethanol will boil at 60 degrees C. Separately, I would also like you, my students, to estimate the boiling point of diethyl ether at 400 torr, as well as the external pressure at which diethyl ether will boil at 40 C. We end then with this question. True or false? Carbon tetrabromide is more volatile than CCL4. CBR4 has a higher boiling point than CCL4. CBR4 has weaker intermolecular forces than CCL4. And CBR4 has higher vapor pressure at the same temperature than CCL4. Now for this particular one, I invite you to try it on your own. And then you're welcome to click the video link in the description below that will take you to a separate video where I answer it for you. Until next time, my dear students and others, please have an enjoyable rest of your day. Oh, my God.